The recording has started. Good evening, and welcome to Creative Broadcasting, the station of unlimited possibilities. Presents Creating Your Seat at the Table with your host, Ashley Little, as she welcomes her guest to the table. Welcome to Creating Your Seat at the Table. I am your host, Ashley Little. A little bit about myself, corporate professional by day, entrepreneur by night, five-time best-selling author, CEO and founder of Ashley Little Enterprises, LLC, owner and creator of Creative Broadcasting, and founder and owner of Talk Radio and TV Network, LLC. Tonight, we have an amazing special VIP guest by the name of Marjorie Brookful. A little bit about her. Marjorie Brookful is a founder and chief executive officer of the Evoking Change Consulting Group and the extension of Brookful Enterprise, LLC. Her firm's primary focus is about evoking change and affecting changes in the lives of people. Ms. Griffith's coaching aims is to equip both men and women with a fresh new perspective of leadership and transformation, which equates to success. By helping them to elevate personally and professionally by working on a few key points, executive image, leadership styles, executive behavior, strategic thinking, emotional competency, and dealing with an ever-changing global market. Additionally, Ms. Griffith combines extensive experience in social services with her original research in employing the impact the image plays on our social, personal, and professional leadership. She believes there is a profound shift taking place globally in terms of lifestyle, education, and technology. Ms. Brookfield recognizes that the social and psychological needs of our society have never been greater. Ms. Brookfield recently received an honorable mention from NASW NYC as an emerging leader in the field of social work. She currently serves on the Political Action Committee of the New York City Chapter of the National Association of Social Workers, where she addresses legislation relevant to social work. She is a member of Step Up Network, a national nonprofit organization aimed at elevating the professional standing of women. Ms. Brookville brings solid credentials to her work with a master of social work from Adify University. Welcome, welcome to the table, the amazing. Hello. Yes. Hello. Good evening. I am fantastic. Thank you for having me. You are welcome. I'm excited to have you at the table. I know you're going to share some amazing leadership nuggets with us tonight. So tell us about your journey thus far. I would say my journey has been it, it has been a, a, a journey where I've learned quite a bit. I've had to open my mind to really understand how leadership, how living your dream, how being a woman in the corporate world, and really striving for excellence and being unwavering in that commitment. So my journey started where I was, I studied to be a clinician as a clinical social worker providing service to people with substance abuse issues, family, family counseling, marriage therapy, and as I evolved and as I realized that as I was growing, my niche was really talent development, really helping people to become the best. And what does that take to become the best? Really, it's a mind shift. And one has to decide that I want to be better. I want to do things at a high level. And I want to present the best version of myself. And when you do that, you have to also be honest by identifying those blind spots that could impede you from moving forward in your life and in your career. So the journey has been an evolution for me as well. As I talk to my clients, it's also important for me to also look at myself and say, okay, where can I grow? Where do I need to shift and pivot? And um, what am I doing to, <clears throat> pardon me, to elevate myself to help my clients be successful? I love that. So you are you aim to equip both men and women with a fresh new perspective of leadership and transformation to success. So tell us more about your passion. So I would say my passion is really helping you to identify what are those behavioral changes that you are grappling with. And a lot of times when I meet both men and women, the blind spot is how am I getting along? with others? How am I really the decision-making process? Am I just sort of going through the 
motions of life or am I really deciding and making a commitment to myself to do better? So with leadership, you have to identify what you're passionate about. I'm passionate about people. I'm passionate about developing people. And I want to help you to find your passion. What exactly are you excited about when you get up in the morning? What drives that fire in your belly when you get up in the morning? And if you can identify that, my goal is to help you pull that out and work on a plan and a strategy to get that idea, that plan in motion that will set you up for success and also to position you in a way where you have more visibility. Love that. And that's so important. Thank you for creating that space as well to help us become better leaders. So I love that. So what are some strategies you would give to listeners about executive image? Hmm. Executive image, hmm, that's a that's a really big concern in today's market because you know, we are living in a day where people have taken on this casual way of dressing, this casual way of being. And when you're dressed casually, you tend to behave casually. The language is different. Your behavior is different. How you present yourself is different. And I remember a time, and I'm not that old, I remember a time where you had to come to work in business professional attire. But mm-hmm. ever since there's been this shift, where business casual or casual, I find that professional men and women are sort of not not realizing where they fit. If I'm business casual, then I can really be behave in a way where I'm not being representing myself in the best possible light. And I caution myself as I say that because I know that I work in corporate America, but I would say when you present yourself in a professional manner, you speak articulately, you smile, you're engaging, you respect yourself and you respect the environment in which you are in, this creates a shift for you, right? And so you are identifying that you know something, although I am business casual, but my behavior can't be casual, my behavior has to be professional. So one of the key things that I work on when I'm working with my clients is identifying that, how about you stand out? How about we think about you can still insert the business casual in your wardrobe, but I'd like to see you in a blazer with khakis, or I'd like to see you in a blazer with denim on a Friday. I'd like to see you come in with casual shoes and not necessarily sneakers on the job. And so when you're able to differentiate yourself from the crowd, then you're standing out and people are taking notice that, John or Mary's not coming to work looking casual. They're actually looking professional, and they people take notice when you stand out or when you decide to be different. Awesome, awesome, B. And you know what? I love that you said it. You could be well. It still is for executives because I'm an executive, and you know by day. So, you know, you, you still got to dress up, right? But you're right. And some companies in some capacities, they have got to the casual dress, right? And it is, it does make people – it is a difference. It's, it's a difference, right? So I'm glad you shine light on that because – Yeah, it is a difference. And I see it. Yeah. I see it every day. I see where people are dressing casually, and there seems to be a casual behavior with the speech, with the body language, and I find that when I am dressed up, and I do work in a very business casual environment, but I'm always dressed up. I'm always right. dressed professionally. I'm always someone who feels that when I walk outside my door, I want to be proud of the way that I look. And if I do decide to wear denim, I'm not going to show my bum. I'm going to wear a blazer. I'm going to wear a beautiful blouse. I'm going to wear nice shoes. I'm not going to look like everyone else. And the most successful people are the people that stand out. Right. Mm-hmm. People that say you're right. I agree. So what are some different leadership styles you would um, share that you will – what are some different leadership styles that you believe are essential to get into the next level? Because I know you're very big on leadership styles, and you teach on that. and you I, help do, with that. I do. I do. Mm-hmm. I do. Leadership requires you to be self-aware. As a leader, you have to be self-aware. You have to be authentic in who you are. You have to articulate yourself in a respectable manner. So your character and your integrity 
is in line with that leadership, right? And so for me, in my career, as I have grown, I have always respected a leader who is honest, who has integrity, who creates an environment where there is a concern for how others are doing, so I am engaged in the process. I am aware of my colleagues, I'm aware of myself, and I create an environment where people are productive and successful and happy. So I would say a leader, when I am coaching someone to really identify what that leadership is, it's identifying your image. Your image is your personality, right? It's how you behave in the environment. It's how you speak to someone. What are people coming away with when they speak with you? Are they coming away with, I really like talking with Marjorie. She is interested. She's engaged. She's respectful. She pushes me to go the extra mile. She really sees the core qualities that I have that can really drive revenue, that can really drive the business. And I find that in leadership, it's not just making money. It really is cultivating an environment of doers and people who care. And that's what I would say in relation to leadership style and what I coach is very important. Yes, it is. I love that. And so I want to dig a little deeper now. So what is the most lacking track, uh, no, lacking trait among leaders today? Hmm. I would say what I've noticed, the trend is people are so mired in the busyness of work that they're not stepping back to get a sense of themselves and how they're showing up on the job, right? So I would say that we are so busy with social media, we're busy with our lives, we're busy with responsibility, that we are not really tuning in, you know, in terms of leaning in to really get a sense of what's really going on. How am I presenting myself as a leader? People are watching me and listening to me. People are taking me in. What am I projecting that will create a shift in the environment? And I have found that in leadership, you can carry a title, certainly, but your behavior, your speech, your demeanor really sets the tone for the environment. And that is where I would say leadership needs to change. And that's why I love emotional intelligence, because emotional intelligence really taps into that ability to lean in, ability to find out what's going on, be curious, be engaging, be warm, be considerate. Those Attributes are very, very important in leadership because that's what drives revenue. That's what drives a happy environment. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Everything that you said, I love that you shine light on that because I think sometimes people don't realize that, those, that you know, having those healthy traits are important for leadership. You they know, are. They healthy are. traits. Mm-hmm. So what is one key leadership lesson you have learned along the way? I have I'm learned sure that the more, I have, I have, and I've learned quite a bit along, in my evolution, I have found that I'm very task-oriented, right? I am very uh-huh. specific. I am very direct. And I have found that I, I really want to do things at a high level. But along with that expectation that I put on myself, not everyone is there. And in leadership, you have to recognize that not everyone is where you are. So you have to meet them at their point of need, right? So in my clinical life, one of the things that they would say to us as clinicians, you have to meet the person at their point of need. You have to exercise empathy. You have to exercise concern. But however, one of the things that they also highlighted was, I can't want your sobriety more than you. So in other words, in the business world, I have to really pay attention to what I am creating in that environment. And so if I'm creating an environment of hysteria, that means I'm a nervous person, I am anxious, I am worried, and that energy, you set that energy in the environment. But if I'm self-aware, if I listen, 
if I'm leaning in, then my colleagues in the environment will also reflect that. So in leadership, when you hold the position of leadership, it is very important for you to take a self-evaluation of who you are, where you are, and what are you giving off? What's the energy saying about you? So therefore, you can really drive that message of we're winning, but here's how we're going to win. We're going to win in a methodical manner with a plan and a strategy that's thoughtfully written and outlined with steps to help you get there. I love that. So that's, that's, that is so, so important. And thank you for breaking it down, right? Because thank at least, and, and I think a lot of people, uh, sometimes the, the deconstructive criticism, they might not be, you know, acceptive of it, but, you know, right. I think you talk more about that too. And, you know, in, in the, in the, in the workplace, in corporate America, right? Um, it, mm-hmm. it, you, it's okay. I mean, you should embrace constructive criticism, but it is important who it comes from as well. So can you talk more about that? Because I know, you know, as we know, sometimes, you know, in some, depending on the, the setting, you could be the angry black woman. So let's, let's talk about it. <laughs> I have never been called the angry black woman. And I, I believe, and here's why. Growing up as a child, my mother was very intentional in, one, working hard, right, behaving appropriately on the job. And I grew up with, a, with this model of you're going to work, you're going to do your best, you're going to really be intentional in your movement, but don't allow yourself to get too cavalier which means I am just going to be loosey-goosey. I'm going to say whatever. I'm going to come in and tell you what happened last night or share a little bit too much. And I have found in my career and I have found with other people working in various environments. I've worked in a clinical environment. I've worked in a retail environment. I've worked in a banking environment. I've worked in an academic environment. And I would say in all those environments I've worked in, It's the same behavior that should be modeled. Your personal life is your personal life. Your professional life is your professional life. And I have found when you insert the the professional into the personal, you've muddied the waters. And then there becomes this open conversation of what took place last night, what took place with your husband or your wife or your loved one. And then this creates an environment of, you, you set a stage for yourself where people can be cavalier with you. People can really say things to you inappropriately. And what happens is when you allow yourself to be cavalier, other behaviors follow too. So I would say the criticism is be professional. Remember when I mentioned how this, this dressing casually has created a casual environment, which is also a casual behavior? But if you're able to rein that in and remember where you are, remember what you're saying, your behavior is very important. And so what has carried me in my career is that I don't muddy the waters. I respect my colleagues. I think they're fantastic. I can have a conversation with you, but I'm also aware that there are certain subject matters that I won't touch, right? And I can still be engaging and warm and considerate and empathetic but I don't necessarily need to know all the details of what's going on behind the scenes. And that's what the problem, the problem lies where we get too casual, we get too cavalier. And so the behavior shifts. But yet when you go into an environment and there are rules, right, you behave according to the rules, then the criticism, the the constructive criticism is legitimate. It's regarding work and not regarding your personal life and your personal behavior. It's all around work. And I would say constructive criticism is important in order to grow, in order to develop further. And if we have an open mind in relation to constructive criticism, I believe we can grow further. And in my career, I have always been open to suggestions, right? I've been open to hearing where I can grow further, hearing where I need to pivot, hearing where I need to understand 
that, hey, Marjorie, I think you need to look at this from this perspective, and here's why. And I've always been receptive to that, and that is why I've been successful in my life, because I've been open to suggestions. Mm, that's good, good, being open. And not taking it, and yeah, and, and not, being, not taking it personal. And I think sometimes people take it personal. If I say that I don't want to do something, that's okay. But in the work environment, it's either I'm asking you to do a work job, it's your job. And so you have to be cautious in behaving accordingly and also being open to suggestion. And when you're open, the doors open for you because people are more uh-huh. inclined to help you. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So what are the most useful resources you would recommend to someone looking to gain better perspective into becoming a better leader? I would say curiosity is very important. Curiosity is powerful in my life, in my career. I've always been, you know, curious, curious about all sorts of things. I don't believe that a manager has time to walk you through all the nuances of life, right? I don't believe a manager has time to tell you what books you should read. I don't believe a manager has the time to walk you through other steps. It is so very important as a professional to really be curious about what do I want to do? What do I want to be? What skill sets I want to develop further? Certainly one can have a mentor, one can have a coach, one can have someone that you're sharing knowledge with, but in order for you to grow further and really step it up, and and going back to that, that comment I made, doing things at a higher level, I have always been curious. I've always been that person, well, I'm a good, I am an intellectual. I, I love to read. I love to really help, help myself. And if I don't know something, I'm not afraid to say I don't understand. I don't know. Can you walk me through? And even then, I believe it's important to really further dive into the subject matter be, behind the scenes. You don't necessarily have to ask your boss, hey, I don't understand this. They may give it to you one time and maybe a second time, but it's so very important for you to really go out there and read and and really fill yourself with the knowledge that you need in order to excel in any area that you are interested in thriving. Mm -hmm. So curiosity is, is, is very important and curiosity is powerful. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It is. So embrace that for our listeners that are listening. Embrace the curiosity. So, Audrey, you have built multiple tables for yourself. I consistently watch you, and you're doing amazing things. So I ask all of my guests this question. You're welcome. I ask all of my guests this question. How did you create your seat at the table? Wow. I would say throughout my career, I have always been open to suggestion and when you're open to suggestion which is development right you are not afraid for I have a very dear friend of mine and I and and she and I will talk quite a bit and one of the things that I say to her is hey give it to me straight straight no chaser you don't have to coddle me tell me what it is that you need to tell me I will take it in and I believe that that has served me well in my life I mean, my mother was a very direct person. She didn't beat around the bush. And so my, my, my mentality is be kind in your delivery, certainly, but I want to hear the feedback. I want to hear what you have to say. If it's done in love, I will receive it, and I will process and make the shift. So what has created the seat at the table for me is, one, curiosity. Two, I've had amazing people in my life speaking life and love in me. And I would say the fourth thing is I have always been a person who admires other people that are really doing things at a high level. Whatever it is that you're interested in, it is so very important to do it at a high level. High level means there's no room for mediocrity. High level means I'm open to suggestion. High level means I am willing to do the work that it is necessary to get there and beyond. And so for me in my life, I work hard. I'm committed. And when you're committed, the good Lord opens doors that no man can shut. The good Uh Lord sets you up for success because you are not only 
inserting the God factor into your life. You're inserting that when you are doing it in a way where you're highlighting, honoring the good Lord, honoring yourself, and really wanting to show up. When you show up, yeah. people mm-hmm. take heed when you show up. Mm-hmm. People take yeah. notice when you show up. And I'm not saying showing up and just be cavalier. Showing up and respecting yourself, showing up and doing it right. And when you do it right, people take notice. And people will open doors for you. And in my life, I have had some good people open doors for me. In my life, I've had some good people speak life in me, remind me, send me a text, call me on the phone, email me and say, hey, you're doing a great job. I'm so proud of you. And so because of the God factor, God has opened doors that have created a seat at the table. So I didn't do it alone. I did it with the good Lord right there with me, opening those doors and creating that seat for Marjorie Burkle. I love it because you're right. He will, oh, he he can open doors and nobody can shut. Nobody can stop what he has for you. And I'm glad that you have shined light on that for our listeners that are listening. So don't worry about what people say, right? Because that's what you were going. That's exactly right. Yeah. And and so actually, I, I want to say this. I really do because I find that a lot of times when I meet people, people are so concerned with what other people are doing. People are so concerned with how is she doing it, how is she doing it, not from the perspective of learning, but from the perspective of judgment. And I would say to those listeners tonight and those who will catch it on the replay, I can guarantee you that if you insert the God factor into your life, that he has already outlined the people, the places, He's creating those opportunities for you, and they will send for you. The good Lord will send for you. You will Mm -hmm. encounter opportunities that will blow your mind. But here's the thing. You must do it at a high level. You must honor yourself. You must honor God. You must treat people with respect and dignity. And when you do that, you're showing up, and you're showing up the right way. Don't diminish other people. Don't disrespect other people. Don't be so gossipy. Treat people with respect and dignity. And that will carry you in your life in a way where people will be struck by that and say, wow, I want to do business with this person. I want to open doors for this person. I'm compelled to help this person. And that is what has helped me in, throughout my life. And, and so I'm excited about what's going on in my life, but I know that God has some really bigger things in store for me. But I honor him daily because I honor myself. Mm -hmm. I love that. So we all have a journey, you know, on our journey, we have to embrace the process and the process is, 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 is is needed, right? We have to go through the process. Absolutely. So so what did failure teach you on your journey? Wow. I would say what setbacks are key, right? I mean, I'm not a perfect person. I've had setbacks in my life. I've had moments where I've, you know, been on my knees and and, and in tears and feeling like I'm coming undone. But I would say what has saved me in all those moments that I was coming undone, I always remembered that the God element has been so powerful in my life. And I know that we need friends, and I know that we need we have family, and I have a very supportive family, and I have really good girlfriends and good guy friends that love me and want to see me through. But there are certain processes that you must do alone. There are certain growths that you must go through alone. And when I wrote my book, you know, it really was about me sharing a moment in my life where I couldn't call on my friends. You know, when your parent is diagnosed with, with cancer and the doctor tells you that your parent has three months to live, you can't really call on a friend. You can't really say, hey, girl, I need to talk to you. What is, what is that friend going to do? What can they do? The news is so gut-wrenching that you're trying to wrap your head around, how, how, how do I deal with this? I'm coming undone. I am coming undone. How do I do this? If I'm going through a divorce, how do I reconcile that I'm going through a divorce? And those setbacks, I put my knees on the ground. And that has helped me. And so I feel very passionately about 
in life, you need to insert the God factor. You need to have a spiritual life. You need to have a, a moment of meditation daily to help you get through some of the really challenging moments in your life that a girlfriend can't help you, a bottle of alcohol can't help you, drugs can't help you, your husband or your wife can't help you, but you got to put your knees on the ground and really call out to your Heavenly Father and say, I'm coming undone. I need a lifeline, and I can mm-hmm. guarantee you the good Lord is going to throw you a lifeline. And the way that the lifeline is thrown at you is in such a way where you recognize that I could not have gotten this lifeline from my friend, my husband, or my wife, or a job, or any of those extracurricular activities that I mentioned, right? you got to do it on your knees. And that has been my experience as I've gone through the process I've learned to get stronger on my knees. I've learned to get stronger by being honest with myself and having boundaries. And so for anyone out there listening, I would say to you, you do have to trust the process. And failure is part of the process. And what appears to be a setback is God setting you up for success. And it's a set up for greater success. And I am living proof of that because, you know, death, divorce, shifting of cities can really be a a little hairy, you know. It could be really a a trying time. Yeah. I agree. I agree. So what did success teach you on your journey? Because you're very successful. Ah, I would say success has um, humbled me. Success has allowed me to really be in a place of awe. I'm in a place of awe. I'm in a place of looking at my life and and really making some clear decisions of what's important. And people will see me and meet me, and I'm always beautifully put together. I dress well. I do. It's something that I love. I love to be well put together, but it's also something that I was taught as a child. My mother was a very elegant, sophisticated lady who dressed beautifully. So that's in in me, right? But I think sometimes when people meet people, they prejudge them on the surface. They don't give them an opportunity. And so I would say success has taught me, you really get to see what people are made of when you don't talk about your success. You know, and people are always throwing, I do share bits and pieces of where I've been and what I've done. And people are like, wow, really? You've done that? I'm like, "Mm, yeah. And they're like, well, why don't you talk about it? I say, why do I need to talk about it? I, I don't understand why I need to say what I've done. I mean, in conversation with you, I may say certain things, but success has taught me that humility is important. Honesty is important. Being authentic and comfortable in your skin is important because at the end of the day, success is great. But if you don't have anyone around you who's loving on you to, to be present and available, it means nothing. And, and I will say this, if, if Steve Jobs, who was so successful and so wealthy, if God said to him, Stephen, you, I will give you help and you give me all your money, I can guarantee Steve Jobs would have said, let's do it. I want my help. I can always make money, right? And so success, people think success is about money and accolades and and things. It's not about those things. It's about making an impact in other people's lives. So my success is when I meet a client in one place and they evolve to become a better person through our coaching process, that is success for me because my goal and my mission, my life's mission, is evoking change in the lives of other people. So that is success for me. And I love everything that you said because it's it's so important. And the main thing that really stood out was staying humble, right? Staying humble. and You're staying humble, and that's just the key. That's the key. (laughs) It is. It is. Mm-hmm. So what do we serve me? Yes, 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 and that's what you know. I think we all have to remember: always stay humble, right? Always stay humble, yeah, and always remain a student. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. 
So what can we expect from you in this new year of 2020 and this new decade? I know you have so oh my God. in store. I do, I do. So it has been a great new year, the launching of my book, as you know. Uh-huh. The, uh, the, name, the title of the book is Thank You, The Essence of a Thoughtful Mind. It's a 31-day devotional with spirit-filled, and um, that's kicking off. I'm having a class on that. Well, I wouldn't say a class, but a a Facebook Live, if you will, where we'll dive into the book, 31-day devotional, and I really want to help people to understand when you're thoughtful in your movement, you have greater success, greater balance, and, and the health and wellness is very important. Your mental state is important to remain calm, level, clear, and you can't do that if you're coming undone and you don't have a, a, a source. You know, the God factor, as I mentioned, is key for me. And so people are always asking, oh, you're so leveled, and I always say it's the God factor. So the, the other thing that I'm planning is a podcast. It's called um, Intimate Conversations with Marjorie, where we will dive into subject matter that's really affecting us all. And it's not just for women. It's for both men and women. It's designed to really start the conversation, help men and women to understand where they are, what can they do better, so, you know, that, that question of how do, we, how do we get into the mind of a man, understand our men out there. And so I really want to dive into that further, really help our women, help our men to become better men and have guests that will really speak to the development process. And um, I'm working on a project called the Women's Conversation of Power Collective. And it really is about helping our women today to understand that the power lies within them. And as women, speaking for myself, I believe sometimes we give our our power away in relationships. We give our power away in life. We don't understand the power that we really have is within. And if we just tap into that power, we can do some incredible things in our life. So there is a lot going on, but it's all driven around people development because that's my passion. And so there's another secondary book coming. And I would say that that book is going to come in late, late spring. And so I'm excited about that. And um, so there's some good stuff happening because the commitment is designed to better myself and better other people. And you can't go wrong when you're committed to developing other people because the goal is I'm helping build the kingdom. And that's important to me. I love it. So congratulations on your book. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. I, I, I'm so in awe of the success of the book. It was, you know, bestseller, you know, within the first 50 yes, minutes I of love launching. It. And I was just blown away. I was just in awe of what God is doing, honestly. And so I get a lot of feedback from the book. It's really changing lives and, most importantly, changing perspective, right? And I think sometimes in life we're so busy, we're so inundated, but if we would just take time to really honor ourselves and give ourselves that moment of peace and just come down a bit, you know, and really just say a prayer. Even if you're not someone who understands the Bible deeply, I didn't. I I bought a Bible that could teach me how to understand Scripture. And so as I was learning about Scripture and learning about how I can insert that into my life, it helped me so much. But the meditation, I meditate. And when you're able to meditate for an extended period of time, it allows the brain to slow down. It allows you to really hear, you know, the good Lord speaking to you and giving you direction. So I would say that has been the best part of the book, really helping people to understand that they have the power to evoke change in their life, but they have to be thoughtful about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you know, so, my, my styling business is, is, is key, just helping people to look their best and, and rearranging closets and helping people to win in all areas. So that's all that's going on, my dear Ashley. (laughs) Awesome. Awesome. So tell us uh, before you go how they can purchase your new book. Where can they go purchase? So they they can purchase my new book on Amazon and type in my name, my first name and my last name, and the book will populate. And also, too, you can go to marjorieburkle.com which is my website which has also a link to the book as well 
and um, my coaching services and my styling services. And so anything that you need regarding development and styling and growing further in your life, they can go to my website, marjoriebriffle.com. All right, so will you please tell our listeners how they can follow you, support you, and connect with you? Oh, yes, awesome. yes, so oh, yes. awesome. <laughs> so Instagram, it's Marjorie underscore the coach. Instagram, Marjorie underscore the coach. Facebook is my first name and my last name, Marjorie Griffel. LinkedIn, it's Marjorie Griffel. Twitter, it's MB Stylist. And so all of my social media is attached to my Facebook. So if you need to reach me, you can certainly reach me on Facebook. And there is a direct link to all of my social media feed. And so I'm just excited about this year. I'm excited about what the good Lord has in store. I'm excited about all the wonderful people that God is, is, is opening doors for me to meet. And so some incredible times are um, happening. I love it. I love I'm it. Please follow. I'm excited. I'm just happy on the shoulder to do this. <laughs> awesome. So please follow and support Marjorie and definitely get involved and support her. She's definitely somebody to know. Thank you. Thank you again for taking the time out of your very busy schedule to come to the table tonight. This has been a powerful interview, and we cannot wait to invite you back to the table. Thank you very much, Ashley. You have a great evening, and thank you for inviting me to the table. Be well. You are welcome, and I look forward to working with you and collaborating with you in this new year. Yes, yes. This is not over, yes. for sure. Yes, ma'am. So I would like to give a special thanks to my intern, Sarah, from Tennessee State University, and my intern, Vontaria, from Winston-Salem State University. You all may follow me on Facebook at Ashley Little and on Instagram at underscore Ashley A. Little. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Creating Your Seat at the Table, where Ashley speaks with corporate professionals, celebrities, entrepreneurs, authors, and speakers who are transitioning or have transitioned to entrepreneurship. 